you're watching Talking Europe on France 24. I'm Catherine Nicholson at the European Parliament in Brussels. Now, here's a question. Where do you get your news and how independent do you think it is? The age of everybody reading a morning newspaper is long gone, but consumption of news media is high and it has a big impact on us and on our societies. Now, Reporters Without Borders has recently documented how social and political tensions are fueled by social media and new opinion media in countries, including France. It also says that suppression of independent media is contributing to a sharp polarisation in so-called illiberal democracies, citing Poland as one example of a state where the government has consumed consolidated control over public media and is seen to be working to influence private media as well. Well, the European Commission recently presented groundbreaking proposals for new laws that aim to protect editorial independence, boost transparency on media ownership and strengthen independent media regulation. The plans are going to be scrutinised by members of this parliament who will also get to propose their own amendments to it. And that's what we're going to be discussing today. With me, we have Gwendolyn delbos Caulfield, a French MEP from the Greens Group and one of the lead MEPs on rule of law and democracy issues. Thanks for being with us. Hello, thanks. And facing you, we have Ilias Contéas speaking from a print media point of view. You are executive director of the European Magazine Media Association and the European Newspaper Publishers Association. So thank you very much for coming and speak to us. Thank you, Catherine. Delighted to be here. And let's start off um, with just a word to you, Gwendolyn, as you so active on all these issues, democracy, rule of law, etc., including media freedom, of course. Uh, do you see a need for EU laws to protect media freedom at this point? The need is immense and urgent. Um, this is in a context, I hope everyone knows now, of, of declining rule of law in a number of member states. And it's not only the two usual suspects, Hungary and um, Poland. On the question of independence of media and the situation of the journalist, it's much more European-wide. Uh, we've had murders of journalists. Uh, I mean, this is one of the big stories that started all of this work. The murder of Daphne Caruana Galicia in Malta that needs to always be recalled. The murder of Jan Kuziak in Slovakia. Since then, we have other murders, one in Greece very recently. So journalists are threatened um, and they are threatened by powers next to the governments most of the time. Uh, and so we need to help these media to exist because media freedom is one of the pillars of democracy and European democracy cannot exist without it. Ilias Conteas, your thoughts on all that? Uh, I do agree 100% uh, with the statement that media freedom is one of the pillars of democracy, of European democracies, and uh, democracy cannot exist without uh, media freedom. The protection of journalists, the safety of journalists are important pillars. Uh, in Europe, uh, and I, I do agree with what you said, Catherine, at the very beginning, uh, and I think with what Gwendolyn has said about serious incidents that have appeared uh, in, uh, in member states uh, in the last years. So when it comes to the Media Freedom Act, uh, we do recognize that there are good intentions uh, in, in place. Uh, however, we do also have concerns about some elements uh, in the Media Freedom Act that we consider fundamental uh, in the sense that uh, press freedom in Europe has operated throughout centuries on the basis of certain elements. And we feel that if those are now uh, disregarded or uh, disrupted fundamentally, uh, this is not going to be uh, a positive development. I'd like to give some reaction. Uh, we would have liked to have had a representative of broadcast media here as well to give a slightly different point of view. But I can give some reaction uh, from the European Centre for Press and Media Freedom, which was uh, broadly very positive about this European Media Freedom Act. It said we support the EMFA, which breaks significant new ground in our efforts to protect media freedom in Europe. It's identified many of the key issues where the EU and member states must urgently act in order to protect media freedoms. The statement of intent alone is very welcome. Now, this includes Reporters Without Borders and, and other organisations. Um, but as a representative of print media, what, what do you see that is uh, pot potentially harmful or, or discouraging for print media? Thank you for asking the question. Uh, just uh, one point. Uh, 
I mean, of course, we are the classical, the traditional print media, but we also have more and more an increased digital presence. Uh, and <coughs> this, of course, brings us sometimes in conflict uh, with the big platforms these days. But that's maybe an issue for, for another debate. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe some points of concern from our perspective uh, are the following. Uh, we don't... Europe is a diverse uh, region. Europe has always relied on the diversity of its culture, on its geographical diversity, on its linguistic diversity, and the media markets across the Union have been built on uh, these elements. So we don't feel that there is uh, one common market mm. uh, that justifies the regulatory intervention by the European Commission. A second element, uh, the supervision uh, from a central authority, this European uh, board, is unprecedented for our sector. What we feel is also problematic is the direct involvement of the European Commission. It's like, you know, you have a government, a European government, supervising the media. I, I don't think this fits very well and I, we believe that it has to be addressed. A third yeah. element that is also equally <laughs> important, the Media Freedom Act uh, tries to address specific problems, we recognize that, but at the same time it completely disreg disregards the publisher. Uh, the publisher is not just the owner. Mm. The Media Freedom Act speaks only about owners, so the press freedom of the publisher is also important and it's not addressed with. Uh, it goes in a completely wrong direction. Uh, just picking up on those concerns then about potential concerns about freedom of expression or some kind of control uh, by European authorities, uh, what do you make of that? Do you see a danger in no, that? No, I completely disagree and I think it's a misrepresentation of what this act is. I mean, there's no uh, intervention of the Commission. It's regulatory harmonised rules like we would have for some police action, like we would have for some judiciary regulation. It's more and more the case. If we want Europe to exist, we have these regulations. Um, and it's going, in fact, where I really don't understand, it's that it is going to uh, prevent uh, governments with a with, uh, 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 will of controlling to control that. And that's mm -hmm. all. It's not a control from the European Commission. It's just a stop to these governments that are at the moment buying, uh, having their friends buying more and more. I mean, Hungary has been the big example of that. It was in one day a number of friends of the Prime Minister and the government gave their um, uh, media to a very opaque conglomerate. Since then, we have no news on how it's happened, and since then, it's only doing propaganda news, like in Poland. And so, it is indeed to really uh, uh, allow uh, media freedom, and it's not at all an intervention of the Commission. The Commission doesn't have the means and the staff to do it. Uh, if I may add... Uh two elements here. Uh, we have been discussing this act with the Commission for a few months. During one of these discussions, one of the main uh, Polish editor-in-chiefs said to the Commission directly, what we do need from your side is political support. It is not regulatory intervention. It is not going uh, to help us. Uh, I, I do recognize, again, I say, that there are, there are problems. However, the but disruption the is, is important. The this, disruption is major. But for and example, we have this to situation that. that came about in Hungary uh, a couple of years ago, I mean, this came about, you know, as an EU member state um, where there were no other EU regulations. I mean, could this situation, the situation could theoretically happen in any other EU member state, and that would be a suppression of independent media? Uh, yes, it could, theoretically. Uh, however, how do you solve this? Uh, by bringing uh, the whole media across Europe under one regulatory authority, by not uh, giving to the publishers the opportunity to work together uh, with their editors, with their editorial teams uh, to define uh, the line of a publication. We have specific problems, uh, but at the same time, we have also member states that are benchmarks for press freedom in Europe. Let's not forget that. And let's not uh, say that uh, the blueprint that we want to establish is the bad examples and not the good examples. Let's allow to all the possibility to keep, uh, to keep their models. 
but what do I what do I have in mind is the freedom of expression uh, part, and of course the fact that we don't want you know to undermine too much the role uh, of the publishers. Just a brief response on that. Yeah, I, I really don't understand it. I mean, uh, first thing is that really there will be no intervention even of the regulatory body on what the editorial line is. What the what is proposed in the text is, for example. For public media, the, 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 the hair leaders of public media are chosen in an impartial way. This is exactly what you say about these countries that have good uh, laws already in place. So we're just taking these laws and saying on the European level, we want every time leaders of, of the media, public media, which is a, 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 a something that belongs to the people of the citizens of these countries. So this is normal to be uh, decided in an impartial one, uh, way. And we want these public media also to represent the diversity of opinions in this country, which is no more the case in Poland and Hungary. This is not at all for uh, uh, the private media. On the private side, the only thing that we're saying is that they have to protect their journalists, they have to protect the independence uh, of opinions, and, um, and, and we want to have a, a transparency on ownership. This is not only about media. There's a number of things today, markets all over Europe, we are asking them to have transparency on, on the ownership. That's all that this Media Act is saying. There's no intervention, direct intervention. Well, that's where we'll have to leave our discussion. I know that the discussions are ongoing between stakeholders such as yourself and members of the European Parliament like yourself. So thank you both very much for bringing your opinions to the fore here as this process continues. Gwendolyn Delvos, Caulfield and Ilias Contias, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks to you for watching as well. See you soon here on France 24.